Hi everyone, it's Roger here from What's On at Disney Plus, and today I am here with a special guest, Raphael, who will be talking about a brand new Disney uh, series called Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion. So I'm going to um, throw this one straight over to you, and if you could give us an introduction to what the new series is all about. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion is a composition that evolves around a modern Latin American family where uh, their 12-year-old niece, uh, sorry, 12-year-old daughter, she is chosen by this wonderful magical mask, and that mask grants her powers. In this case, for her, uh, as she gains those powers and turns into a superhero and starts getting distracted and curious about the, the underbelly of the, of the society and wanting to fight crime, she bumps into another family member that happens to be a, another superhero. So it's it's a very beautiful full circle that happens within her teenage life. And uh, it's a front row seat about learning culture, family, you know, and kicking butt. I'm going to be honest, this one really caught my attention because I love superheroes, but I'm also a huge pro wrestling fan. So it was definitely like, OK, this this could be quite fun from a Disney uh, Channel show. So I've got to ask you, what was your role on the show? Oh, I was a director of photography. Yeah, and so what did that involve? Uh, basically the look and the tone and the style of the, of the photography. Uh, cool. It's a, it's very well imprinted in the in the show. When we um, when I first read the script, it was kind of like, okay, I see it kind of like Scott Pilgrim versus the World, and you know, and and Stranger Things, and different little cool like more uh, modern or kind of like avant garde teenage like comedy dramas. So um, that's kind of what I'm in charge for. Yeah, that's cool. And so, sort of, did you were you like um sort of trying not to kind of make it look anything like like Marvel to kind of make it look its own unique thing? Yeah, you know, um, the cinematography. My aim for the cinematography was to be a little bit more bold. Uh, definitely not the normal Disney Channel um, DNA visually, if you will. Um, so that was my main take. I, I I remember telling the studio, I was like, I really want to make this different and pop and darker and moodier and have, and not, you know, not be afraid of shadow. As you can see, you know, in the beginning of the, the pilot in episode one, she's still learning who she is when she's in her teenage life at home and in high school, the light is very frontal because it's transparent because it tells who she is and she knows who she is and you're set in this world of, uh, of high school when she becomes a superhero and she goes and fight crimes and we see bad guys and we we meet henchmen and and we go through little puzzles of of crime fighting then you know shot you know it becomes a little bit more shadower and moodier and more contrasty and and colors pop and there's very like beautiful uh orchestrated camera movements by the directors as well I worked with great directors, and a wonderful cast. I mean, the, the cast is incredible. And uh, there's also some comedic relief. So that's where I wanted to take the cinematography. And there was any like influences from like superhero shows and movies in this series? Yeah, my main two influences, believe it or not, was Tim Burton's 1989 Batman. My favorite. <laughs> right? Classic, monochromatic almost in a way, but like very, very beautifully shot and and directed. And so that was one of them. And uh, Scott Pilgrim, I would uh, not to be redundant, but Scott Pilgrim, Scott Pilgrim versus the world was definitely the, the, the highest. Sorry about that. Was definitely the highest, highest. Uh, um, visual reference i would say the strongest visual reference by far for the show especially because most of the way i shot it and most of the way that the first 10 episodes are shot they really correlate with the style of editing and i think I'm, viewers will appreciate that and i'm gonna ask as well from the other side what was like the, like the, the wrestling influence on this series mm. It was really home home down by its culture and in the Mexican wrestling culture in in specifically. 
being that it is a show that revolves around uh latin american family so therefore it's like you know disney's first like really good latinx show um this this whole marriage between the mexican uh uh wrestling culture and incredible modern cinematic stunt movement that that really comes down to james lou we were blessed we had james lou and if you look at james lou james lou was basically jackie chan's right hand he was the stunt coordinator for all those big movies but and rush hour and all that stuff but obviously uh mr chan jackie chan would do his own stunts so you know so thanks to James Lou, to be honest with you. Yeah, I gotta be honest, that whole scene where she kind of picks up a mask from a stall um, definitely hit me because I remember doing the same thing myself when I was um, traveling through Mexico and kind of go, oh, look, there's Rey Mysterio's mask. And I kind of instantly was like, oh, I remember doing that myself. <laughs> and just kind of, oh, I really, really, I really, I really enjoyed that whole aspect to it. Um, so I'm gonna ask as well, what was the biggest challenge with making this series? I think the biggest challenge to making this series is that you're working with kids and you want to portray an environment that's very positive and that's very fun. Um, again, the cast is so, so incredibly talented and professional, but I think it's really fitting in this incredible um, universe that we wanted to implant and create for Disney uh, within the script at the same time try to do it within the constrained hours of you know um acting child labor yeah and it's so vital and it sounds silly because it's almost like oh so that's the hard part it yeah it's extremely extremely hard because you really want to get everything done properly and you want to make sure that they are that we are coming to their world as i would say to the truth and how did like the pandemic influence on um, what you were doing in terms of, like in terms of your role? And heavily, uh, one visually, I couldn't have more than I think more than fifty extras at one point of the pandemic. I think it was like maybe on the second wave, you know, when the whole world's like now the you know everyone soon's gonna get vaccinated. So the film industry got really hard, and it was kind of almost adapting to a new way of work on set it's you know your oxygen's cut in half everyone's very passionate everyone's a very everyone's an artist you know it's wrestling um it's it it was tough but i think visually uh the lack of extras because you can't have that many extras yeah. uh on set and um and i think and i think that that just having the process of preparation everyone meets through zoom versus yeah. in real life which when you meet with your fellow colleagues for filmmaking it's much better in person than than through zoom but we're all adjusting you know yeah. uh luckily disney has been disney was incredibly uh professional and at the front front of of how the pandemic uh was basically evolving the filmmaking industry and how different was it working for disney compared to some of the other projects you've worked on in the past oh very very different well one because you're you're working with with children right you're working with a cast that's half of the cast is is under 18. uh the second is like you know you're also working with a studio that creatively is very supportive and compared to other studios, I mean, you know, depending on the subject matter, you know, and uh, but that, but that, that was kind of basically it. It's kind of it was just a different uh, studio that I'm shooting for a different subject matter, you know. Cool. Yeah. And what was one of your highlights for working on this series? I think one of my highlights to be working on this series was definitely working with. Again, I can't say it enough, but the incredible cast, especially uh, Scarlett Estevez, the lead, the girl that plays uh, Ultraviolet, she's just so wonderful. And I'm just so lucky to have been able to to uh, film this incredible, incredible cast, uh, ensemble cast. And I think that, um, you know, being able to work with uh, 
the best in New Orleans and, and a wonderful, wonderful union crew and uh, talented, talented, incredibly creative and talented below the line crew members of New Orleans and, and, uh, and, and working with the production designer, Nate Jones, because I, I like to get married to the hip to the production design because, you know, the better the production design, the better the cinematography. So, you know, Nate Jones really provided a wonderful, wonderful world filled with great colors, beautiful um, set construction, storytelling, uh, ingenuity. Like, really, I love when production design caters in and affects storytelling with the way that set constructions evolved. And I'll, that's a lot deeper, but it... it for, for 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 filmmaking, it's a dream, and uh, wonderful textures, and I think that's uh, that's kind of it. Okay, and the final question, and this one's a completely um um a different type of thing. It's what's been your favorite Disney Plus original so far? Oh, I think so far, I think the Mandalorian was wonderful. Yeah, that you, it's it's still that kind of classic series. I think that's I think been, so. been fine it for, for so. a long time. I think, I think they did very well as a studio to really, really, uh, you know, it's just John Favreau is just a genius. I wrote him a letter uh, not too while ago, and uh, you know whether it's within uh, a surreal environment or a storytelling normal two D environment, um, John Favreau is just wonderful. So I think The Mandalorian. Cool. That's great. Yeah, I, I, as you can see, I love the Mandalorian as well. So I don't think yeah, <laughs> I yeah, that one. yeah, yeah. No, no, definitely Mandalorian. I think so far, yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to me today. We can um, watch the ultimate, uh, so Ultra, Violet, and Black Scorpion be arriving on the Disney Channel in June, and they'll be arriving on Disney Plus at a later date. And on that note, thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Like, follow, and subscribe. Also, a huge thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and also on our YouTube channel memberships. And I'll just see you guys in another video. Laters.